We're going to start with games that were played in the Las Vegas Chess Festival. Let me change the scene. Just give me one second. Um, so we're going we're gonna to start with the games that were played in Las Vegas Chess Festival. First game we're going to start with is the game played between um, Levy Rosman and Vladimir Kopian. So as we know, um, Levy yesterday morning recovered his game. He made a draw against Nicholas, N Nicolas Theodorou, uh, the Greek international master, soon to be grandmaster. Um, and a very, very long, very, very complicated middle game and end game. And, um, and, and so, uh, and so he moved on to the final game where he, or not the final game, but the final game of the day, the second game where he played against Vladimir Kopian. Definitely a very nasty pairing. I would say considering Levy drew, you would not expect to play someone who, um, even if their rating is on the down, they don't play so much. Something is wrong with my OBS. There is nothing wrong with my OBS, you guys. Um, so, uh. Anyways, th th thank you for that, you guys. But uh, as I was saying, though, um, as I, as I was saying, a very nasty pairing certainly for for um, for Levy Levy to have. Uh, let me make this a little bit smaller so chat shows up. There we go. Um, so uh, so it's a very nasty pairing coming off a draw to have to play against to have to play against someone so strong. Certainly. All right. So the game starts d4, d6 is played. And now Levy plays e4, certainly a little bit surprising. Um, Levy has been playing a lot of d4, a lot of c4 openings. A little bit surprising to see him play d4, d4, d6, e4, trying to play a um trying to play into the Pyrrhic or the modern defense here. So e4, g6, knight c3, c6 played here. Uh, two games per day. Bishop e3, bishop g7. Pretty, pretty, pretty normal opening. Um, I would just say I, I'm a little bit surprised because every game that we had seen out of Levy, he was playing uh, English. I think he played only the English, if I remember correctly, with C4, C4, and D4, some kind of some kind of English or anti um, anti theory sort of line. So here he plays plays a very different opening altogether. So Bishop B3, Bishop G7, H4, Knight F6, F3 played here by Levy. Already a little bit on little bit on the shaky side. I suspect that at this point Levy, because he doesn't normally play E4 on move one, was slightly outside of his comfort zone. And so he plays f3 here, which uh, certainly is not not the best move. Now, I think when Levy played bishop e3 and h4, I actually think Levy was confusing this with a lot of games that he's seen of mine, perhaps, where uh, if black plays something like a6 here, there are, many, there are many lines where you can play h4 very early, like right here. And after h5, you get like knight h3, knight f3, knight g5. But in this position, after um, after h4, knight f6, it's really nowhere near as effective with black having played c6 instead of a6. Um, so uh, it seems like a very minor difference. But it actually it actually makes it changes things quite significantly here because now this h4 move doesn't really have the same purpose or the same sting as it did before. Uh, so now Levy plays f3. Um, queen b6 is played by Vladimir Okopian. A3 is played here. Of course, the idea is that if Black plays queen takes b2, thinking there's a free pawn, White goes knight to a4, and um, this is very this is very very bad for Black. The queen is obviously just trapped, and you lose material. The music is a tad too loud. Um. Uh, thank, thank you to Aiden Chess for the uh, for the 21 months. Thank you to Jizzy ARL for the 6, Libby for the 3, and Dog Pound for the 12 months. I'll double check on that, but I think sound is good. Sound is fine. You guys are you guys are trolling. Um, thank you. Anyway, all right. I'll move the mic down just a touch. But the queen would get trapped if you were to grab the pawn. So of course you can't grab the pawn. So here h5 is played by uh, played by a copian. And now rook b1 is played by Levy here. Again, not not a move that I would recommend. I think that in this position. Uh, it's much more reasonable to play, I don't know, like bishop d3, knight e2, maybe queen d2, although I guess queen d2 hangs the b2 pawn, potentially, but, but I really don't like rook b1 here, it's a very, um, it's a very kind of, uh, very, very kind of slow move, it also takes away the ideas of castling to the queen side here, because you've already played eight, because since you've already played h4, it's gonna be a little bit hard to castle your king to the king side, so rook b1, e5, queen d2, e d4, queen d4, not bishop takes d4 here, because if you take with the bishop, black is a very nasty move, knight takes e4, um, if you take the queen on b6, black will take your queen on d2, you take back, and after pawn takes bishop, black is simply up one extra pawn here in this position, so for that reason, and actually just to finish that thought, after takes, let's just say white takes on e4, black can, I don't know if black takes with the queen or the bishop, let's just say the queen takes trade, uh, knight d6, king d7, knight takes c8, king takes c8, and black should be better here. Rook e8 is coming. White really lacks development here. None of these pieces have been developed. Uh, they're all in their original squares. Um, so, so yeah, so th this is already pretty bad. So queen d4 is what Levy plays. So queen takes queen, bishop takes knight bd7, um, knight to h3, and now king e7 played. And we reach a middle game here, and um, it's pretty balanced objectively, I would say. I think that... Uh, that both sides, both sides are kind of maneuvering a little bit, but it's it's pretty balanced. 
So bishop c4, knight e8 is played here. Rook d1, bishop takes d4, rook takes d4, knight e5. Um, I don't know if I can say that I'm happy with that decision. I guess, if anything, I would say maybe, maybe here instead of bishop c4, you can go like crazy. I'm not even looking at the engine, and the engine likes bishop e3. It's funny. But I, maybe I go bishop e3 here just to avoid trading down. Because the one thing white has here that black does not have is white has much more space, especially due to the pawn being on e4 and the pawn being on d6. So this pawn d6 can become weak. So you definitely don't want to trade down. So let me, in a way, kind of violate some of the basic principles, which is that when you have more space, you don't want to be trading down um, in terms of material. That's that's the thing that I would say. You really don't want to trade. So rook, rook d1, um, bishop takes d4 is played here. Uh, rook takes d4, knight to e5 is played here. So now white goes bishop to b3. Knight to g7 is played here. And now knight to f4 by levy. Again, it's not bad for white at this point. Um, but it's it's kind of like you're you're really you're losing the advantage. The advantage, the potential small advantage is slipping away as you trade down pieces. Um so f6 is played here, king f2, g5 played by Akopian. Now the one good thing for uh, the one good thing for Levy in this game is that Akopian, Akopian, even though he's playing with the black pieces, really needs to win this game. He's playing against a 2350 player. He needs to take take chances. And so g5 is actually f6 and g5 is not the best way to play. Objectively, the best way to play here would be to play something like 96. Takes, 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 and pawn takes or king takes. And most likely after king f2 and rook d1, the game is going to be a draw. Um so it's kind of funny because in a way, because the Copian has to win the game, Levy's decision to uh Levy's decision to kind of kind of a uh, play like this, it kind of works out in a sense because he, he gets a chance after f6 and g5. Here, however, Levy plays knight h3, which is kind of really the start of um of making some moves that I would say are are, are inexplicable. Levy has to win two. Um I don't know. I mean, it depends how you look at it. If Levy honestly thought he could make a norm, then yes, he has to play to win. But I don't think that was Levy's, Levy's general uh, mindset. I think his mindset was just play solid chess, try to get a good result, versus trying to just make a grandmaster norm. So bishop h3, gh3 is played here. And this has really started going wrong. I think here knight f e2 with the idea of knight g3 makes a lot more sense. Um, because after knight h3, bishop h3, you'll notice that black has gotten rid of his light square bishop, which wasn't doing, doing anything. But white's bishop on b3 is also not great now because even though it looks like it's on a nice pretty diagonal there's nothing that it can capture so so bishop takes h3 g takes h3 is played and this is this is i think the really the start of going wrong i think probably here what i would have played is i think you still should just take with a rook and keep your pawns um keep your pawns connected rather than doubling them up so gh3 knight g6 is played here uh rook g1 is played by levy and now knight f4 played by a copium. Very nice move. Not knight takes pawn. This is a free pawn because after knight takes h4, uh, there are a couple things where I can play, but I think e5 is the, the most dangerous because now if black takes back with the pawn, you can actually take the knight and then take the knight on g7. And um, and now you have a rook and two, knight and bishop for the two rooks. So rook g1 is a uh, is a nice move, but a copium does not, does, not, does not blunder. He plays knight to f4 here, threatening to take the pawn on h3 and um, fork the king and the rook. So knight f4, king e3 is played by levy, knight e6, uh, attacking the rook, bishop takes knight, knight takes back, now you attack the rook, but you also guard the pawn on g5, rook d2, gh4. Um, again, I'm not going to go too deeply in, into the analysis because this is a long game, so f4, rook g8 is played here, rook dg2, trade, king f7, rook d2, rook g8, and now it's kind of significantly worse for black again. There, there are a couple of moves that Levy maybe could have played that would change it a little bit. But again, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds um, of, of the possibilities here. So knight e2, rook g2 played. Good move, by the way, I think, or maybe not. Maybe rook g2 is not best. Um, maybe king e7, king f3, and just... Uh, computer says a5 and black's better. Understandable, but very hard also to win because all the squares are covered here, so you can't really enter. And um, you have these double pawns. You don't have entries for your knight either, so it's very hard hard to play. Objectively, I think this is pretty good, but not 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 so not so easy. So rook g2 is played. A copian tries to bring the rook in and go for counterplay. Rook d6, king e7, e5, rook h2, um, with the idea of taking the pawn on h3. So levy goes knight g1 to guard. Um, again, I don't know if this is the best move here. Uh, but it's already kind of difficult to play. So knight g1, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook c2 is played here. Knight to f3, rook takes, or not rook takes b2, sorry. Knight to f3, rook c5 is played. I think this is a good move. So I think after rook takes b2, uh, knight takes h4, white's knight is jumping. And there actually are potentials, there are potential ideas to make a draw. For example, let's say you go check and take. 
White, I think, can check on... Actually, F5 is the way. King F7, Knight H6, King E7, Knight F5. And Black can never really go away, because if you go away, you're going to lose the Knight, and the Rook will guard the Knight on H6. So, um... So after knight f3, rook c5 is played here. Very nice move to attack the pawn on c5. Um, Levy goes rook d2. a5 is played here by Akopian. Rook g2, a4. Logical move to fix the weakness on the queen side of the pawns on a3 and b2 and the pawn on a4. So rook d2, rook c4 here. Uh, rook g2, b5. Rook g6, b4. Um, Levy's trying to get his rook in for counterplay. I suspect this is still within the range of where it could be a draw, but it's difficult. Um, so king d3, rook f4, king e3, trade, trade, rook c4 back, king d3, rook c1. Um, and so this is kind of where the game gets really uh, gets really interesting because black has four pawns. Mind you, one of them is a double stack on h4 and h3, which means that it's not really an extra pawn. At the same time, you have, you have weaknesses on a3 and h3 as well, and your e pawn is blockaded by this great knight on e6. It can't go forward. Um, so knight takes h4, rook a1 is played here. Again, not knight f4, by the way, except for knight f4, white can just smooth the king back, hitting the rook. And if you take the rook, I take back with check on g6. And I don't, I guess king f7, knight h8 is a draw. Again, I don't want to get too deep into this end game, but the computer says it's a draw. So rook a1 is played, and levy goes knight to f5. King d7 is here. King c4, rook takes a3. And this is where Levy goes wrong. Levy plays knight g3 here. I do believe that if Levy had played rook h6 here, after rook takes a3, rook h7, um, uh, king d8, I think knight e7 would have been enough to draw here, or maybe rook a7. I'm not sure the exact order, but I know that at this point, there was definitely a way, um, there definitely was a way for Levy to draw here. I, I don't remember what it was, but there was there, king e4 instead of king c4 maybe was a draw. Okay, but knight g3 was a big mistake. So I know when, when I looked at it very briefly, after rook h6, there was a drawing line for white. But after knight g3, h4 is played, knight f5, rook h3. Now he goes rook h6. And you basically, problem is you have the same position, except now black, except white is missing the a3 pawn. So we go back, um, we go back to this position. You'll notice the same thing, but the pawn is on h4 and there's no pawn rolling to a3. So you get the same line. But but the problem is now um but but now the problem is the pawns on h4 and this pawns on a3. Both pawns are one square closer to the end of the board, so the white people pawns are marching to the end. So rook h7 is played, king d8, knight e7, uh a2 played, knight takes c6, king e8, rook a7, rook h2. And now here Levy makes the final mistake with king d5. What he needed to do is play knight b4. Now, I believe this was still losing after pawn to h3, knight a2, um, rook to d2. But I didn't look at it super closely. Um, the point being that the h pawn is just rolling down the board, and you could use the knight to go to f3 and support for the push. So, for example, say you go rook h7, there's knight g5, rook h5, h2. White goes knight to c3, go knight to f3. Uh, white can't go knight e4 because there's a check to collect the knight. And let's just say you play rook h7. Black can now go rook to, or not rook to d1, sorry, what am I doing? Uh, black can just simply go like rook d4, check king b3, and rook to h4. And after trade, you can't stop this pawn from queening here. So uh, so this was really the last chance. I think it was losing after rook d2. I haven't looked, I haven't looked in depth with the computer. Um, but I, it's very difficult. So so king d5 is what he plays now. Copian, no, no mistakes, plays knight c7. Very nice move. You can't take the knight because then black queens. Um, and so Levy goes king e4, and now now h3 is played and again. The white people pawns are just going right down the board. They're too far apart, the h pawn and the a pawn. So now Levy goes knight d4, rook b2, uh, knight f3, trying to stop this one from getting down the board as well. I mean, there are just too many, too many pawns. So knight b5, rook a5, rook to b1. And here Levy resigns because uh, black is threatening to push the pawn and make a queen. And if you take the pawn a2, there's just knight c3, forking the king and the rook here. And, uh, and it's, you're just down, down a rook and going to lose the game very shortly. So very difficult game for Levy. I think what I would say is there, there are a couple things that I would say. Um, in general terms, first of all, he's playing. He was playing someone who is uh, much stronger than he is. Very difficult pairing, as I said. Um, Vladimir Kopian, his rating is definitely on the way down. Uh, it's like twenty six thirty right now. He, he hasn't he he hasn't played much chess in the last decade, probably. But uh, but Levy, but not Levy, but, but Vladimir Kopian was a very strong player. He, he was over twenty seven at twenty seven hundred at one point in time. So definitely, uh, definitely a strong player. Nothing, nothing to be. Uh, be disappointed and Levy, Levy put up a good fight. What I would say, broadly speaking, about, about not even this game so much, but what I felt about Levy's play 
was it seemed like as soon as as soon as he started playing players who were much higher rated or better than him, he started turtling and trying too hard not to lose, where he was trying to draw games and just play end games versus playing aggressively the way that he was before. For example, I think if Levy had been or not, if, if, when Levy was playing against uh, Christopher Yu, he played very aggressively. He he went after him. It was a very nice attacking game, and um and I I felt that uh I felt that Levy in both of his games yesterday he tried to he tried to be very uh. He tried to sort of turtle and not, and, and his, his mindset was more, I don't want to lose instead of trying to win the game uh, and just playing the best moves. So that, that's what I would say uh, to me is that's the only, only downside. Of course, mind you, he's playing someone who's like, he's playing someone who's, uh, who's, who's, I mean, it was 2,700. So there, there's no shame in losing, but it just, that's the one thing I would say is it felt like Levy was trying too hard. He was trying too hard to turtle and play, play just end games and not lose as opposed to trying to just play his best chess and, and, um, and be aggressive. So that, that's the one thing that I would say um, about this game. But again, very difficult, long game, uh, very, very tough game, certainly. And um, Akopia just had much better end game technique. That's, that's all that needs to be said, really. Uh, I don't know how his time management was. I don't know how his time management was in this game. Um, but anyway, we will go over a couple more of Vladimir Akopian's games later uh, as well. But we're going to keep continuing with our Las Vegas games. And unfortunately, the the second round yesterday round um, round uh, was was round was round seven. All the streamers suffered some very bad results. So uh, it was not a good it was not a good day and a good round for streamers. Of course, Eric Rosen lost in round six to Akshat Chandra uh, in round seven. Levy lost. Now we're gonna take a look look at Hans's game. So Hans went d four. Oh wait, sorry. D four knight f six c four e six. Knight f3, d5 played here. G3, bishop e7, bishop g2, castles, castles, c6. Okay, so Hans plays this pretty standard um, Catalan defense, uh, pr pretty normal. Although c6 is definitely not a regular line. However, I did notice that in the Paris Grand Chess Tour, c6 was played by Etienne Bacro. So c6 is played here. Knight c3, knight bd7, knight d2 played by, uh, played by Hans, b6, e4. Uh, D takes C4, Knight takes C4, Bishop A6, B3, B5, Knight E3. Pretty good position for White. Great stability in the center of the board. Pawns on D4 and E4, and very well placed knights. So B4, Knight E2, uh, E5 played by, by Arthur Go, trying to open up the center of the position, uh, open up the Stefan, and open up this long diagonal for the Bishop on A6 here. So Bishop B2 is played here by Hans, takes, Bishop takes C4. And this is kind of, I think, the big mistake here is that Hans. Uh, plays a little bit too. Uh, he plays too, too traditionally. He he worries too much about material and he doesn't get aggressive here. The funny thing is, I think if Hans was playing this in a blitz game against me, I suspect that Hans would have played knight takes d4 in a heartbeat and been like, okay, I can take this pawn, queen e8, queen f1. And I've got great knights. I've got a big attack, and I'm playing against Hikaru. So I think that Hans would have done this against me, but because Hans was playing against someone that I think he perceives to be, well, not perceives, but someone who's definitely not me, and someone who's like, I think, 2,400-ish, Hans's, Hans's perspective was different. And so he thought, well, if I give up material and it doesn't work, then it's kind of going to, I'm going to look really silly, or it's just, I don't know what's going on, kind of. Um, whereas against me, where, where he has nothing to lose in a sense, he would have definitely just taken with the knight and been been hyper aggressive. So it's kind of interesting how the mindset shifts based on based on the opponent and the rating of your opponent. Um, we already saw it. We already saw it with um, we already saw it with uh, with Levy the way Levy when he started playing 25 26 hundreds, his mentality shifted where he's a, he was much more conservative and turtling. And here you see it with Hans as well, where he plays against someone um, where he plays against someone where he perceives them to be inferior to him. And so he he actually ends up playing a bad move. He plays bishop takes pawn. And after knight takes pawn, bishop takes f1, uh, knight takes c6, queen e8 here. Uh, after queen f1, white is very simply, I think, winning because you have pawn to e5 next move. So it's uh, actually, I just realized something. Though. After knight takes d4, bishop f1, there might be a trick here, which is that if you take, there might be this trick. If you take, there's this, and somehow all the squares are covered. Mind you, it's still very complicated. Obviously, I don't want to get into the get into get into the weeds here, but very complicated. At any rate, um, uh, Hans takes on d4 with the bishop. Uh, Arthur go, goes knight c5 here. Hans plays knight to f5. Again, putting a knife on f5 is very good. The only problem here is that with the queen on d1 and the knight on e2, there are a lot of weaknesses. Uh, the knight on e2 can't move. She lose the rook. 
Um, and so it's a little bit, little bit dicey. So knight to e6 is played here. Now Hans goes bishop b2. The good thing, however, for Hans is that um is that, that Arthur Guo can't trade the queens because the bishop hangs on e7. Mind you, you can play this, play this with rook d1, bishop b2, but after something like rook d2, bishop b5. I don't know if bishop f6 or e5 are best, but probably just e5. There are many different ways, and white is simply uh simply simply winning here. So Arthur Guo plays bishop c5. Hans plays pawn to e5. And this, I think, is a big mistake by Hans because right here when you play e5 and the knight jumps to d5 here or to g4 potentially, you really you, you give away the whole advantage that you had here by playing e5. So um, so I think for Hans, queen c2... Well, I guess queen c2 runs into bishop d3, to be fair. So it's not, it's not trivial, but I feel like there should be something better. Maybe, I guess you still can't play rook c1. Maybe rook, uh, rook e1, maybe knight g4. Maybe it's already tricky. Maybe knight f5. Maybe bishop b2 is a mistake. Ah, uh, computer says rook e1. Okay, computer says rook e1 is good. Very difficult. But anyway, Hans goes bishop b2, bishop c5, e5. Queen d1, rook fd1, knight g4 played here. Uh, already some mistakes again, as you see. The computer says knight g4 here is basically winning for... Uh, is winning for black. And I'm not sure why, but I suspect it's because white can't really defend. If you go queen c2... There's bishop d3 hitting everything. It's a classic wooden shield. Um, and otherwise, I'm just going to trade the queens and take the knight. And you can't move the knight either because I assume something is hanging. Or I don't know if it's queen d1 or if it's bishop f1, but something is hanging. Um, so, yeah, knight g4 is a strong movement. Set after queen d1, rook d1, knight g4. Now white can play knight d4. Whereas if we go back here, if you play knight g4, knight d4, you're going to hang the rook on f1 here and you're going to resign. Um, so... It's tricky. So he plays the wrong order with knight g4. So Hans is able to play knight e d4, try to keep the game, uh, try to keep the game complicated. Knight e5, knight c6, trade, uh, rook c8, and now bishop d5. And this is another big mistake by Hans. He needed to play bishop e4 here because after bishop d5, bishop f2. Uh, if you take the bishop, there's rook to c2 hitting the king and the bishop. And so if you go bishop e4 here, there is no bishop f2 because the bishop cover or no rook c2 because the bishop on e4 covers c2. So, um, so yeah, so instead he plays bishop d5, bishop f2, king h1, and now rook c2 by Arthur Guo, bishop e5, uh, bishop to c5 back, rook c1, they trade, rook d8, another great move. If you play bishop takes e6 here, there's bishop b7, and your king is getting checkmated here by the double op combo here. They cover all the critical squares. So bishop g2 is played by Hans, f6, bishop f4, bishop d3. 93 g5 and here hans just resigns um i mean what to what to say really what to say it's just a very um very uh very clean game by arthur guo what can you say uh i mean really just a clean game uh, a couple of mistakes by both sides i guess i would say um but he played he played very well played very well i think um you know in, in terms of a uh, hans i think his I don't know if it's too tentative or what it was, but he also didn't get his kind of game, to be fair, either. He didn't really get the sort of the flow of the, the he didn't get the middle game, uh, the sort of the middle game initiative that he usually does when he plays the Catalans. So tough game, tough, very tough game for Hans. Um, and unfortunately he goes down as well. So we're gonna take a look at one more game. Uh also a streamer game. As I said, difficult, um, diff difficult round for the streamer. So D4, D5. We're gonna look at the game between Josiah Sturman and Andrew Tang. D4, D5, C4, E6, Knight C3, Knight F6 played here. Knight F3, Bishop E7, Bishop F4, Castles E3, V6. Pretty standard Queen's Gambit declined. Andrew has played this many times against me um, in online blitz as well. So takes, Knight takes, takes, E takes, D5. Uh, now, normally Queen takes D5 is the main line here, so it's a little bit dubious to take with the pawn. My assumption is that Andrew Tang... Uh, Took with took with the pawn because he didn't want to make a draw. Because you can take with the queen and there's a draw. Um Bishop D3, C5, Knight E5, Bishop E6, Queen H5, uh, G6, Queen F3. Now this is actually wrong. I think here, yeah, if white takes on G6, this is actually very strong for white. Because after it takes, if you take with the pawn, there's Queen G6, King H8. I check and then I take on E6. And um, or maybe that's wrong. Computer says what? I guess computer says queen e6 is better with the king on h8 so that you have checking ideas. Whereas if you do it the other way, um, 
Where if you do it the other way, like here, there's there's uh, there's a Ruka seven. I guess black can kind of survive. So that would have been very bad. Anyway, uh, queen f3 is kind of surprising. f6 played here by Andrew. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. Uh, rook f7. Bishop h6 played here by white. Rook g7. Queen h5. Man, this is brutal. Bishop f8. Bishop g7. Trade. Uh, f4 played here. Another nice move. The idea is to play f5 and, and lock this bishop in here on g6, but also force this bishop away. So, for example, say you play a random move like... I, uh, what's a random move that I can play like here for example you can go here bishop d7 check king f8 takes and you hit the rook but you also create the checkmate pattern as well on f7 so uh so queen d6 is played here by andrew white castles not the best move by the way i think in this position already white can almost go barbarians caveman style with something like h4 takes them like h5 h6 maybe not here maybe not quite yet maybe it's a little bit too much right here but i feel like they're definitely there's probably something here that's really strong at any rate uh, he castles. Knight c6, rook f3. Again, very thematic moves. Yeah, I was trying to see if you could just barnstorm the uh, barnstorm with h4, h5, h6, but it doesn't quite work out um, in time. Anyway, so knight c6 is played, rook f3. White does the rook lift here. Knight e7 played by Andrew. f5 to guard the bishop, attack the bishop on e6. Bishop d7 played here. Uh, rook a f1 played by Josiah Sturman. King f8. Rook g3. They trade. Um, Rook c8 is played now. Queen h7 again. A lot of lot of problems here for Black. The bishop on g7 is very very much stuck. I can go bishop h5 and collect it. I can go f7 and collect. So you really have this problem on g7 with the rook and the queen bearing down on it. The so queen b4 is played here by Andrew Tang. Bishop h5 again, putting pressure on the bishop on g7. Knight f5 played here. Rook g7. Um. Queen takes d4, king h1 played here. Um, so king h1, knight g7 is played. Queen to queen to h8 played here by uh by Josiah Sturman. King e7, queen takes knight. And now we reach an endgame, even material temp temporarily. Uh temp temporarily, even material, but the problem is black's king is very much on the run. So king d8, queen f8, king c7, white trades. They trade king b7, king g1, rook f1, rook c1, rook f1, rook c2, bishop f3. And now Andrew's pretty much lost because white has two connected pawns just rolling up the king side. Two connected pass pawns, I should add, and um, it's just simply positionally lost. So king c6, h4, takes h5, bishop e8, rook e1, king d7, not bishop f7, by the way, because then after rook e7. Uh, you have to go like bishop g8, h6. I'm just going to go rook g7 and h7 and make a queen here. So, so Andrew goes king d7, h6, bishop g6. Uh, Josiah Sturman takes correctly, guards the pawn in a2, guards the pawn in g2. There's also bishop g8 to protect h7 as well, and maybe something on the a8 square as well. So rook b5, bishop c6. Very nice move, by the way, here. Takes rook e6, king d7, rook g6, and now it's just lost. Again, the two connected pawns are way too fast here. Rook h5, g4, rook h4, g5, king e7, check, king f8, king g2, rook a4, king g3, rook a2, rook b7, uh, rook a1, h7, and Andrew resigns here because uh, basically the h pawn is going to the end of the board. There's also g6, g7 as well, which is winning, uh, and that's game over. So very, very tough game for Andrew Tang. Um, he also loses his game. Uh, and that's that so yesterday was a very very difficult day for uh for, for the streamers eric rosen lost in round six hans lost in round seven levy lost in round seven andrew tang also lost in round seven um so very very rough uh very very rough very rough event for um for, for all the streamers so difficult anyway those were the three games that i